What's up guys, JR Raymond back again, and I wanna to talk to you real quick about a real touchy subject that a lot of people either love or hate, and that is USB-C. Do we need them? Are they important or are they not? The other thing we wanna to touch on, the PBA was just bought by a new company. So let's talk about that when we get back. Stay tuned. <laughs> So it's back. All the complaints, the people who are upset with USB-C are back and man, are they roaring on Facebook, on social media, on all these places. Because people are upset they're not getting a magnet. They're mad because USB-C took away their magnets and their, their rings that they should be getting every year, they think. They think for your $13 membership fee, yes, I say $13, because that's all you pay to USB-C at the national level. Anything that you pay above that, is all for your local association. So if you wanna be mad at anybody, maybe get mad at your local association for charging the same amount as a national level and you're not getting anything from your local association. The people who are responsible for your awards and all that now, it's left up to your local associations. So if they wanna take the money that they're charging for the local fees and put some money into awards and prizes and stuff like that, they should be doing that. So you need to take it up with them. But to be mad at USB-C, and at the national level for not knowing where your money goes, well, that's a little bit ridiculous if you ask me. And I understand, like, people want to ask the question, well, what do they really do? You know, what, what, are we, what are we even sending them money for? What do they do? Well, what have they done since it was ABC? They're the governing body. They've taken care of this game since the inception of the game. So we have to have somebody, just like all other sports have. Golf has a governing body. Um, uh, uh, softball has a governing body. We have... Uh, tennis has a governing body. All of these sports, even cornhole has a governing body. Disc golf has a governing body. Like it all, they all have that. The difference is, is that we as bowlers try to think that, that USBC, they were an awards program, that they were only there to keep track of averages and to uh, give out awards. Well, that's not what they're there for. They were there to do the regulations on the bowling balls and the equipment and the bowling centers and all that stuff. And, they're, and you're going to say, I get it. You're going to say, well, they drop the ball on the lanes because now they don't even run the lanes or check lanes anymore. That's because there's thousands of bowling centers. Who's going to pay somebody to go and, you know, certify every single bowling center, which they still do have volunteers that go out and certify the lanes, make sure they're up to par, up to the specs that they are looking for. Um, and there's still an awful lot of centers that don't, get, don't follow those guidelines. So we walk into a center that has extra dots or that are wider, that has an extra board, that are longer. Those places don't certify. So now we go into there and complain because they're not the same as every other place that we've bowled. Well, that's because they don't follow the guidelines, excuse me. Well, so who's going to go and they're going to you know, track all this stuff? Who's going to have somebody come and randomly check the lanes to see if they're using appropriate patterns or not? Because then what happens if the center's not? Now all of a sudden that center, uh, the awards that people would have been eligible for no longer are eligible. So those people are going to get mad at the bowling center. And if the people are mad at the bowling center, well, then the bowling center is just going to say, well, screw it. We're not even going to sanction anymore. And then they're just, all their league bowlers are just going to be just normal league bowlers. Oh, we have to look at and put it into perspective. We're trying to figure out where does our money go for $13? Well, like I said, they take care of all the bowling ball specs. They set the guidelines for everybody to use. They have for over the years, forever. They do all the research, the development, all these new things. They have to try and figure out what's best for the game. Which direction are we going to go? Are we going to allow differentials to go up to you know 070, or are we going to drop them down to 045, or are we going to drop them lower? Are we going to let RGs and cores get ridiculous and big, or are we going to trim them down a little bit? These are the decisions that have to be made and try to decide whether that's good or bad for the game. And these are the guys that are making it. We don't have to agree with them. We don't have to say, well, I think that's you know great. We don't have to say everything that USBC is great, but I think we need to support them because without USBC. We don't have bowling. I don't think we have, I don't think you understand that we don't have what we have today with rules, regulations, you know, league tracking, average tracking, all of that stuff without that $13 a year. Like we're making a big deal about $13 a year. Let's put the $13 a year into perspective. USGA, which is, you know, your golf association, they're $25 a year. What do you get for that? A rule book. Okay. So you're paying. $12 more for a USGA. And all that does is allow you to play in sanctioned leagues and it gives you a rule book to follow. Oh, and a bag tag. Sorry, you get a bag tag. That's right. What else we got? USTA, which is the Tennis Association. Check this out. 
$44 a year. That's three times what you're paying USB-C right now. So what are they getting? Discounts. You get discounts, just like you get from USB-C. You get discounts to all these different companies. You get uh, to play in leagues. <laughs> what are we getting for $44 there? I don't see this big uproar. Granted, I'm not friends with a lot of tennis players or anything, or golfers for the most part. But you don't hear of this stuff in these other sports. Here's a good one for you. Check this out. Cornhole. The American Cornhole Organization, I think they call it. The ACO, Cornhole. $35 a year for your membership to be in ACO. So that way you can go and play in cornhole leagues and stuff. But we're mad about $13 in bowling. Like, this is getting out of hand. The, our job as bowlers, and I, I get it, like, once you had something, once you had the awards in your hands and you're like, this is really cool. I love bowling my 300 and getting my ring every year. I get it. It sucks when that goes away. It really does. Because now you feel like you're not getting anything. But we have to put it all into perspective and understand what the governing body means for us. It doesn't mean a whole lot for the recreational player, for the person just coming in. Not necessarily. But uh, at the same time, we should be educating those types of people to say, look, this is, this is the body, this is the governing body that handles and makes sure that you have an average that's tracked, that you're able to go and compete in these different events if you so choose, and they take care of all the lanes and the certifications and all that. And, and you can argue that they don't do a good enough job with that. That's fine, but they still do it, and they still put an effort in to make sure that stuff is done for you. So I would suggest if, if, if you have any doubts that you want to be a USB-C member, then don't be a member. I mean, I, I'm not going to fight with you. I think that every bowler who bowls in a league of some sort should be a USBC member so that we, we have that organization, we support that organization. But if you don't want to, go join Cornhole. Go be a Cornhole member for 35 bucks and get nothing for it other than, you know, they track your average or whatever they track. you be able to let you go play leagues and stuff like that. All of these organizations that charge way more do much less than what bowling does for you. So uh, I guess in that sense, Good luck if you choose to do something else, but I would prefer, and please take 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 me up on my offer. Um, stick with USBC, stick with league bowling, stick with your centers. You know, support the game as much as you possibly can. Look at what Bolero is doing now. Bolero just bought the PBA. Now they had that bad reputation slash have that bad reputation of not really caring about the league bowlers or tournament bowling and all that because of one really bad comment that was said. Um, that you can kind of go and look at yourself. I'm not going to bring it up, you know, here. But now they're trying to make up for it. They do care about league bowling. They do care about competitive bowling. And they want to take care of the bowlers. And, and the one way they can reach the most bowlers is by, you know, joining forces with the PBA. So is this going to be a bad thing? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Some of the questions out there are, you know, well, are they just going to buy it and then shut it down? No, I don't think so. Well, that's what they did with all the bowling centers around me. Well, you never know. I mean, it's business is business. When it comes to bowling centers, it's completely different. People are mad because they raise their league prices, they raise their uh, their open bowling prices and their price of the food. I mean, it's just it's a part of the business. Like it's it's part of what are you going to do to make the most money out of a business that you have, and that's what they're doing. Most people don't realize that open play and the parties and all that stuff is actually more uh, more income than what a league base brings in. But then then they argument what. Well, but you get the league for 33 straight years, 33 straight weeks, that's guaranteed money. Sure. But also, if I can fill the place for two straight weekends uh, of nothing but open play, paying premium prices, I'm going to make the same amount of money in two weekends that I would make all year in one league. That's the mindset they're at. That's where they're going with this. And they're trying to make that money and open up more avenues rather than just league. I understand. Do I agree with it? I think you can do a mixture of both. I think we can... We can cater to the leagues and we can cater to open play and we can just make sure leagues are done at a specific time. No leagues on Fridays because those are big open play days. I mean, th some of these rules that they have, I would agree with. I would say do the same thing. But at the same time, they have a lot of money. They have a lot of bowling centers. They have a lot of revenue that comes through and they can actually do some big things to help the PBA. The PBA is making some huge strides with the Fox new, the new deal with Fox. Uh, you, if you've watched any of the shows, you've seen some of the cool things that they've done on there now. And having the financial backup of a company like, you know, Bolero would be amazing. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be cool. And you can see the interview. I'll, maybe I'll post a link in the description here of the interview with the CEO of Bolero, where she talks about 
we're, we're going to financially back this. We're going to try to get the players what they deserve. We're going to try to get the players to make a little bit more money and do the things that need to be happening for, happening for the professional level. So I'm excited to see what the what what they bring to the PBA uh, and what Tom Clark and company are going to do to uh, embrace the new owners and see if they can't work together to create something really, really, really cool um, for upcoming youth bowlers and the kids that are coming up trying to decide on whether they want to be a professional bowler or not. Um, so I think it's getting to the point now where it's starting to, uh, obviously you can't make a great living yet with it, but we're getting there. I think we're getting to a point where uh, if you're one of the better bowlers in the world, you're going to make a little bit of money. So let's hope, let's pray that it goes the way it should. I'm optimistic. I'm open-minded to think that it's going to go how it should. So um, I think that's pretty much all I got on that. But Make sure you support these organizations, guys. Support the PBA, support Bolero, support as much as you don't want to, support the USBC, all these companies, support them all, because these are the guys that are making bowling what it is. These are the guys that are, and I know you may say that's bad, but these are the guys that are keeping bowling around. These are the guys and gals who are, you know, doing the things that bowling needs to survive. Uh, bowling just a decade ago was not doing very well, um, especially at the PBA level. And Tom Clark has put a bump into it. They, he's put, you know, he's rejuvenated it a little bit with this new Fox deal. And it's only climbing. The ratings are climbing. Sponsors are coming around. Everything's starting to climb. So bowling is getting back to where it needs to be uh, with more TV shows, more tournaments, more money out there. So let's support it all and let's figure out what we need to do as people to help it rather than try to hurt it by constantly being negative about it. So until next time, guys, uh, take care. And if you have any questions about anything, you can try to ask down in the comments. I'll try to get to them as much as possible. But be sure to comment below what you think of all this stuff. Uh, and make sure you subscribe and hit that bell for the next couple notifications of whatever, whatever uh, videos that I have coming out. So take care, guys.